Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and warning, XRP price could fall to 21 cents on this chart pattern, says analyst Michael Harris. Harris, hey, what, what, what the hell am I talking about? Harris? Michael Harris? I'm not even starting over. I'm just leaving that in. I do, <laughs> that's happened like my last freaking video, too. I do all of these in one take, and uh, that's, that's just going to be that. There we go. I, I like to keep it organic, though. There's going to be some blunders here and there. Anyway, this comes from Invez.com. So I, I want to talk about this because, frankly, as far as all of the chart analysts that I've been following, uh, in the, as far as short-term price action, uh, it's, it's kind of like, it seems to me that most are thinking that it's more likely we'll see bullish, uh, a bullish direction in terms of XRP price action than bearish. But there have been some analysts that have said, okay, you know, maybe it'll go down to if it breaks below roughly 27 cents, you know, 27 and a half cents. I've seen a couple different numbers depending on the analyst you're talking about. Maybe the next RP might go down to 26 cents, 26 and a half cents, maybe even 24 and a half cents. And that's if, you know, you break below support. And this is the most bearish piece that I have found in a long time. And I don't really see these these days. Like, it's, I haven't seen anything this bearish uh, reported in like a month and I, I don't necessarily get the sense that there's some sort of trolling going on I think that this is an honest interpretation from this analyst so I, I thought I'd share it with you and uh, share, give, give you my perspective in terms of like well what would that even actually mean does it matter uh, spoiler alert the answer is no it doesn't matter that's my opinion um, I do want to be clear, though, I am not a financial advisor. I do not have a financial background. I'm not offering advice. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write under any circumstance. This is purely for entertainment. I love being a member of the XRP community and uh, engaging with everybody and researching stuff and just talking about it and making these YouTube videos. It's a very fun hobby, but that is all that it is, just to be super duper clear here. All right, now that that's out of the way, uh, XRP, as I record this, is at 28.3 cents. Uh, Bitcoin is at $11,639. And the market cap for the crypto asset class is at $362 billion. And Bitcoin dominance, happy to see it's still under 60%. Now that's just me being selfish because of my XRP bags. Look at me being greedy. I know. Look, I, I want Bitcoin to go up. And, and the neat thing about all this is Bitcoin can go up while its dominance goes down. All that means is that in terms of price appreciation, it just means that altcoins are outpacing Bitcoin. And I do want to see that because XRP is an altcoin. And um, holy hell, I just noticed this. It did happen. I knew it. I knew it was going to freaking happen. XRP is now number four in market cap. I man, now I wish I wish I had known that before I hit record. I'm not gonna go back and like start this all over or try and pull it up now and make you guys wait. But I put a tweet out at the end of July. There's just like nothing was going on, and I just tweeted out on my own. I was like, uh, waiting for Tether to print a bunch more Tether that is not backed by anything, so that uh, Tether can retake the number three market cap spot from XRP. I just tweeted out because I knew it would freaking happen at some point, and I'll be damned. Here we are. Tether has printed more Tether. Do you realize that in March? And I've mentioned this on the channel, so you may be aware, but uh, th there were only 4 billion Tether. And then when, when Tether took the, the spot from XRP last time, it, it printed enough that it got up to 9 billion and then 10 billion. And then XRP was able to retake it. And now it's up to almost 13 billion Tether. My gosh, I'm with David Schwartz, Ripple CTO, co-creator of the XRP Ledger. When uh, he, ex he, he has, like, when did he last do The last time I saw him talk about this is probably on Charlie Shrim's show. Uh, he was on um, he, probably within the last few weeks or so, and uh, he voiced concern about Tether. I can't remember exactly how he phrased it, but I'm thinking, yeah, this is like a train wreck waiting to happen potentially here. I'm very concerned about this. You've got Tether backed. It's just, it's just pegged to the dollar, and it's not even actually sufficiently backed. Like, <laughs> okay, let's see how this train wreck occurs. Do, 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 do. Fun times, guys. Oh, man. Well, anyway, it, it, eventually there's going to be a parabolic run, and, uh, you know, this isn't going to matter unless USDT, like, if they really print an insane... Like, what if there's hundreds of billions of Tether one day? <laughs> you know, I'm not even going to rule that out. It's ridiculous as is. We'll just have to see how this unfolds. But um, XRP is at 28.2 cents, 28.3 cents now. And um, it's up, uh, you know, 37% over the last 30 days. Bitcoin over the last 30 days up 21.56%. So into this piece now, what does this guy have to say? Michael Harris. <laughs> I did that one on purpose this time. Harris. That's not a name. 
21 cents? Play, what you talking about? Ripple XRP price. Just say XRP, man. Come on. Come on. It's just XRP. Has fallen nearly 8% this week as the sellers take control of the price action. The sellers have been working on a specific bearish chart pattern that could eventually take the price action to the low 20s. And, and by the way, this I, I should say this too. This is not the only analyst that has said this. There, within the last couple of weeks, there was another analyst. Didn't even necessarily say that he thought it was likely to happen. But if whatever the support level was at the time, it broke, he was saying, hey, it could go down to 24 or 20. Like, I think he did say 21 cents, actually. But he then stated that if it happens, that would be a, a new level of support, a lower level of support, fine, temporarily, but that it would springboard off, uh, off that to almost 50 cents. And that one has stuck in my head as of late, which is why I've been mentioning it over the last few days as it's occurred to me when I've been talking about price in these videos here. But uh, Ashish Birla, Senior Vice President of Product and Corporate Development at Ripple, has stated that 20% of RippleNet transactions are performed with uh, XRP tokens. Yeah, they're talking about on-demand liquidity, and so which, by the way, is technically now part of, of RippleNet since the, since the rebranding here, whereas before the messaging portion of the platform was known as XCurrent, and then the uh, what's now on-demand liquidity was XRapid, so they were considered completely separate. Now RippleNet um, can be used to indicate purely the messaging portion or that in conjunction with on-demand liquidity it can just be broadly known as RippleNet, which makes it slightly more confusing, but I get why they wanted to rebrand it as on-demand liquidity. It's what it does. It's a much more descriptive, easy to understand term. It was the right move. But just when considering the different aspects of the platform, it's slightly more confusing, but I'm totally cool with it. Anyway, um, our on-demand liquidity, or ODL for short product, using XRP as a bridge currency accounts for nearly a fifth of all transactions on RippleNet, said Berlin in a tweet and posted a chart. Now, the RippleNet Global Payments Network doesn't normally leverage XRP, but the users can choose to use it and the transaction volume of the network remains unknown. So this is the part where as far as the fundamentals, I don't think they're being trolly, I really don't. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. It's not that you can simply choose to use it or not. It's like, I think that a lot of people out there that haven't done research, they literally have the concept of, you can conduct the transaction and you can choose to use XRP or choose not to use XRP and the outcome is the same either way. I, the way I read from so many people, it's as if that, that has to be what they actually think and that don't make no damn sense. I'm just sharing with you right now. It absolutely does not because XRP is a bridge currency. So the messaging portion would be the same either way, whether you use XRP or not. The messaging portion is the same, but the settlement portion will not be the same. No, no, no. It will be substantially worse in many cases, depending on how much friction there is, if, especially if you're converting one fiat currency to a more exotic corridor. Yeah, you could have a chain of bilateral banking relationships that just jack up the fees, reduce the reli reliability, and increase the, the, the time span it's going to take for the transaction to complete. Yet, no thank you. That's very different. And so even then, yeah, you could choose to not use XRP and settle through the traditional Nostro Vostro system. You're going to have a bad time if you do that, though. So uh, not exactly necessarily the best idea there. And so ultimately what they say, and I'm not going to go through this whole piece. It's not necessary to kind of make the points that I want to make and share with you the information that they made, like the meat of this here. But as far as the technical analysis, they write a potential double top chart pattern. XRP slash USD has pulled back this week to trade almost 8% lower. The price action has created a bearish weekly candle that is likely to close below the 100 WMA at 29.3 cents. Hence, it is likely that we will see a continuation of the pullback in the week ahead as XRP buyers have lost control. Which is interesting. This is why I like sharing uh, you know, various opinions and I like seeing who ends up being right and who is right more frequently. Because most of the analysts that I'm seeing now, while they acknowledge that this type of situation could happen, so he's like this Michael Harris, <laughs> did it on purpose again, uh, Michael Harris, uh, it, it, he could be right. And I, I just wanted to make the point that uh, he, he thinks it's more likely. Most of the other analysts that I've been following think it's less likely, but not, it's not something that some of them have ruled out here. Then he writes, what is even more worrying for buyers is the fact that two equal tops have been put in place recently. If the price action breaks below 27 cents, which is where the previous correction ended, that would activate the double top pattern. Oh no, that sounds terrible. Sky is falling. He writes, in that case, 
the target for the sellers is 21.4 cents. Well, I'll tell you what, if that happens, I'm not going to be crying. I'm going to keep, continue to keep purchasing XRP at regularly scheduled intervals. And I'm going to continue to do that regardless of price action until it reaches a point where I'm like, okay, it's gone parabolic. And then I'll tap the pause button and I'll just see what the hell happens. I will sit back. And that's a great thing about preparing before the major uptrend of the next market cycle. But all the fluctuations we've been seeing ever since the, the, the bulk of the bear market really had its effect. So anywhere, say, roughly below 50 cents, anywhere 50 cents and under where I've been accumulating all the way down to the lowest I was able to accumulate was 15 cents. I don't think it's going to matter in the end. I honestly, truly don't. And I'm not offering financial advice. Like I said at the beginning, I'm really not. I'm just sharing with you what I think about this. And I think that as, as there's continued adoption of XRP and the cryptocurrency asset class, as more money flows in, these little ranges, it's going to look like how the, 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 what used to be major fluctuations in XRP price action. You know what they used to be? When it went from half a cent to six cents. That, that used to be like the most outrageous 12-fold increase and then cratering almost exactly back down to where it was. It's, in terms of percentage gains and losses, that's outrageous. But it happened, and that was the norm at the time. But now there's a, there's a new price floor, and the lowest it got down to was 11 cents, and it required a global pandemic for that to happen. Probably would not have seen that outside of the global pandemic. Maybe the low would have been closer to the 20 cent range that uh, we were we were at prior to that, you know, it, which which still is I mean fine. It's it's lower than where it was, you know, uh, say uh, you know for instance late May of 2019 even fine. Whatever. I'm just saying that anywhere in this price range here, it's just there's going to be this jostling. It's going to scare a lot of people. There's going to be panic sellers. There will also be FOMO buying all over this range. But once it all takes off, it's going to take off, I believe. And even if there's a major retracement, see, even if it's over 90% again, like like after the uh, you know the 2017 early 2018 bull run, even if that happens again, the floor is going to be higher. It's going to be substantially higher than where it is now. I don't know where that would be, but there's going to come a time, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's in the next year or two or three. And I don't make price predictions, so I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if something happens along these lines within that that roughly that time frame, where XRP is regularly trading in uh, in terms of dollars whereas right now we're looking at it, it moving around with some amount of regularity with a you know matter of cents or five cents or a, or 10 cents whatever it ends up being and that's still very volatile in terms of percentage increases and decreases but i think that's going to be nothing like people are going to be laughing about how people were panicking which isn't completely justified because like people have skin in the games and like those are serious percentage gains and losses but i get what i get what's going to happen they're going to be like oh my god you had the opportunity to buy it 10 cents or 20 cents or 30 cents or even 50 cents or yeah <laughs> and people were still losing their ever-loving minds and so that's why for me it just makes way more sense to just have a much more long-term outlook and so that's that's where i'm coming from here so even if it hits 21 cents any price action in this range i don't care and that's why i've like i mentioned earlier I have been accumulated in, the, in this range. That's what I have chosen to do for myself. I'm willing to take the risk. It's highly risky. It is, and I think that we need to acknowledge that. Just, you know, that doesn't speak to my confidence. I'm highly confident, but it, it, it is risky. It just is. You know, it's a new asset class with not much of a track record, and XRP is uh, still proving, you know, to what degree it's going to be adopted globally for various use cases, including as a bridge currency. So it's fair to state that. I'm still Mr. XRP Bull, and I'm still going to keep purchasing. But uh, there we are. So the 21 cents, 21 cents. If that happens, am I going to be crying? Absolutely not. Am I going to be emotional? Am I going to be losing sleep and emotionally very concerned? No, I'm not. Even if that happens. I don't know if it's going to happen. But if it does, I don't know, I'll be like, okay, whatever. That's, that's been my attitude. On, like the whole way down, that's been my attitude. It doesn't functionally matter. And so that's where I'm coming from. You can tell me what you think below. What kind of attitude do you have like when uh, when XRP price goes down? Be honest with me. Do you guys freak out a little bit? It's okay. I used to, but then I earned myself with knowledge, and now I just don't allow that to happen. And another reason it doesn't happen is because I, I've only invested what I'm actually willing to lose. If I had done more than that, then I'd probably be emotionally a little bit more concerned. E even, even with the logic in my head, I'd probably be a little bit like, eh, I'm uncomfortable now. So I don't do that. But that's it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Nambu!